Yeah, it is. Creativity is an addiction. It can be a good one. It can be really bad at times, too, because when you're waking up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going, oh, man, what are you going to do? You're going to put it back to bed is what you're going to do. You're going to gain control of when your creativity has control. It's not going to be at 2 o'clock in the morning. You need the rest. It can come back later on when you need it. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. Hey, 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 hey. Radio people do that all the time. If they're not going, <clears throat> clearing their throats, they're trying to figure out what their pitch, volume, and tone are. Hey, ya, uh, K-Rock. Trying to figure out what the depth of their voice is. It's just a radio thing. Then again, it could be just a me thing, too. I may, maybe, maybe I'm the only one that does that inside a... a production studio or a radio station studio but i will tell you though i've seen a lot of radio station studios where the entertainer the talent on the air the disc jockey is singing loudly doesn't matter what song it is i'll tell you what though what the listener does not hear is how out of tune radio people are when they sing. It's just so amazing. I mean, even when I'm invited to these to these schools of broadcasting where they go in and they do their radio shows, they're in there just singing away. <laughs> They're not in tune. I just I just find that to be the most amazing moment because you're in a moment of of uh, you're about ready to share a conversation on the air. And you've got something in your earphones and you're just singing away, just singing away, but you're out of tune. (laughs) Oh my God. On American Idol or America's Got Talent. Oh my God. You you would you would be cringing at at the the tunes and 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 the pitches and the volumes that 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 people are using but it's just so wrong (laughs) but but very very beautiful at the same time hey tarot this is the choice this is what i was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day and today's date is september 23rd 2022 the rays of light are moving through this forest this morning the second day of fall i mean yesterday in the carolinas it was like 94 95 degrees this morning i woke up to 66 degrees and so when you step out into this gorgeous forest which is blessed with so much wildlife the deer and the the just the hawks and the owls you just you just embrace it going thank you thank you thank you for letting me be a part of this amazing moment (sighs) now we breathe and we share a conversation and today it's a pretty heavy subject but i i think that we can all relate with what i'm about ready to share because we're all there it's just that not all of us are open enough to talk about it Too many mental voices. Those voices in our head. It's almost like a vocal convention. To whom am I supposed to be listening to? Or better yet, let me reword that, okay? To whom are we supposed to be listening to? Which one of you is God? During these daily travels, we've been blessed to share physical conversations with some of the most creative people on the planet. Your journey, whether it's to the store to talk with somebody in the bakery or to a banker or to just an average neighbor, you are blessed to have physical conversations with each and every one of these people. And in their own right, they are creative, which includes what? In my life, I've been blessed to be with spiritualists as well as psychics. See, the goal is to be open and outgoing with not only with what I believe, but what I utilize in the ability to listen because I'm always in desire and in need to make a connection. Sadly though, and I'm sure you're part of this as well, there are days when those moments of waiting resemble that of a New York subway, crowded, overtaken, a child left alone in the center of a grocery store. I dreamed last night but I don't remember what mental images made their way to the inside screen. A fork in the road with the ambition to be a spoon. All things are moving in circles, caught in a constant repeat. 66 degrees this morning, but my body is saying, uh, 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 uh. 
94, 95 yesterday, 66 today. Uh Uh-uh. It feels more like 40 below. Too artsy-fartsy? Was it too much hidden speak? Too many mental voices. It's almost like a vocal convention. To who am I supposed to be listening to? Are you in that moment? You can't locate the strength to create separation. You belong here. You belong there. You belong there. No, I'm not listening to you. Oh, well, hey, there you are. Where have you been? I've been waiting months for that answer to get here. And suddenly you suddenly uh, come. No, I I can't deal with you now because I got this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this to deal with. Too many voices, a convention, a gathering, and you wake up and it's 66 degrees, 30 degrees cooler than where you were before you fell asleep. The sun is rising in this moment of now. I can see the rays of light move through this forest in a way that inspire, influence, empower. And I'm worried about the voices in my head when the presence of now allows me to see what will be gone if I don't embrace it. That's how you deal with the voices in your head. What is going on in your present place of now? Those voices in your head are probably experiences that you had in the days, the months, and the years before you got here. But if you see what is going on in the presence of now, you're able to say, this voice is what I should be listening to. I'm Arrow, and that's what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day.